Hello everyone, another beautiful day here uh, at the megalithic site of Gunung Padang in West Java, Indonesia. Gunung Padang, the mountain of light, the mountain of enlightenment. A place that is surrounded by many mysteries. But of course, mysteries, legends uh, and uh, fantasies are one thing. Science and all the subjects that are related to science are uh, another. So it's not my point to necessarily discuss uh, scientific information also because uh, I don't know anything about it. What I like is to tell some stories and <clears throat> of course if anything of what I said yesterday is wrong, is incorrect, please correct me. Uh, if you want to add any precious information to it, please uh, do. Again as yesterday, I'm sorry if I'm not looking straight into the camera, but uh, I'm walking in the back of the mountain barefoot so it's uh, it's full of uh, uh, sharp stones and snakes and other kind of uh, weird things and <clears throat> so yesterday um, I mentioned something about the rocks something about the mineral of this place which is called andesit which is a kind of volcanic rock that is very similar to basalt or basalt. What do you say in English? I don't even know what's correct. Basalt or basalt? Anyway, you, you get what I want to say, right? Basalt or basalt. And <clears throat> at a certain point I mentioned that I happened to be a um, few years ago in a very beautiful place uh, with massive uh, formations uh, of basalt. And what place is that? Well, some uh, basalt formations in the world are probably more famous for uh, tourism purposes, for visitors who travel to those countries and uh, as far as it comes to my mind, I think there are some um, famous basalt formations in, I think, Iceland, some in Ireland, and probably some other places. Anyway, the place where I was is not popular at all, at least not yet for now, because it's a plateau is an entire plateau of the size of more or less England entirely made of this stone. So can you imagine how big it is? And it is located in a part of the world that is uh, unexplored with no officially with no inhabitants and it's the very north of let's say the central part of Siberia in Russia. Now I am myself uh, from Russia and this place is um, for sure nowadays not very well known uh, to foreigners and even Russians themselves do not very often know about this place and this location and <clears throat> it is becoming more and more popular only uh, in the recent years starting of course with the Russian visitors first and hopefully in the near future it will become uh, a more let's say available destination for foreign tourists as well because the place is absolutely wonderful it's beautiful uh, it's wild 
it's silent which is something that is very rare no nowadays it's silent there is nothing there are no buildings it's pure pure nature absolutely wonderful i had the privilege of spending there uh, let's say about four months something like that now the reason why i was there is um, because i was doing some research about some uh, let's say shamanic traditions in russia and through some connections i um, found this shaman who lives uh, there and uh, some other let's say uh, masters teachers that i i know who are very good friends of mine they are friends with this shaman and they gave me his contact and that's how I came to know him but anyway this is not the point of, of this story that I wanna I wanna share uh, because the story with the shaman is something um, for another time and if you wanna know more about it I will be very happy to share more about it in the near future uh, but what I wanna talk about today is the connection uh, that, well, that I think it's very interesting uh, between this place in Siberia that is called Putorana, the Putorana Plateau, and this megalithic site of Gunung Padang in Indonesia. Now, these places are apparently very far away one place is in north of siberia is in the arctic and here we are basically almost at the equator in very hot area of the world in a tropical area of the world and yet there are many similarities um, of well not only of course how to say the shape of the rocks because this is uh, geology right we should ask a geologist why this kind of volcanic rocks they uh, sort of solidify uh, following very specific patterns but the place in Siberia is surrounded by many stories and legends and mysteries as well of a similar kind because uh, if you go there um, sort of the place is completely uh, made of this rock of this basalt yeah that is a volcanic rock yet there are no volcanoes no volcanoes at all a volcano meaning a mountain with a crater no so eventually uh, this uh, was um, probably cracks, right, in, in sort of in the, in the ground, I don't know, millions of years ago, from which sort of the lava was coming out, probably, something like that. This is what I've been told when I was there and this is what I understood. Of course, if I'm wrong, correct me. Now, is this place any similar? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. As a matter of fact, as I was sharing yesterday, this place uh, points into a very specific direction, which is uh, the huge volcano, sacred volcano, that's called Gede, Gunung Gede, Mount Gede. It's a volcano. <clears throat> And um, in this place in Siberia, right, there are sort of openings, cracks uh, in several parts of the, of the entire plateau because, of course, it's very big. And, of course, in the cracks, uh, there are always lakes because, of course, all the water, yeah. Uh, <laughs> goes down and accumulates over there it's a it's a it's a very beautiful place with it's known in russia as a 
region basically of uh, thousand thousand lakes and thousand waterfalls and thousand rivers and it's really like that it's waterfall after waterfall after waterfall after waterfall river 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 lakes 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 of course because this plateau is so big so and of course like we are in the arctic so there is a lot of snow and when it melts in those three months basically of uh, uh, warm uh, summer all the water goes down into this into this these cracks right and it forms these lakes that sometimes are extremely big, extremely long, extremely deep. And the lake, for example, where um, my hut was located on with this uh, shaman, I think the deepest point of that lake was something nearly 300 meters. It was like 280 plus meters, which is a lot for a lake, a lot. Um, so you can imagine the complexity of this place. Now what is interesting is that when you travel, for example, on the, on the water, on the lake, uh, and you look at the both sides, you see one mountain here, one mountain here, one mountain here, one mountain here. So you see mountain after mountain on both sides. And uh, all the mountains have the same height, more or less, which is uh, about 1,000 meters. And if you go up the mountain, if you go up the mountain so to the top, you realize that it's not um, different mountains, yeah, but uh, it's literally a plateau, uh, a plateau. So it's it's all one entire piece that keeps going and going forever because as I mentioned before, it's a plateau with the sides of more or less England. So can you imagine how huge um, that is? And now the hut of the shaman was built at the very end of this very long lake in the heart in the central part of this massive plateau. It's not very easy to reach the place uh, and of course because of that it becomes fairly expensive as well. Um, it's a very beautiful hut that the many decades ago the shaman built as a sort of a countryside house for himself in this place that uh, is according to the ancient local people who used to roam into those areas hundreds of years uh, before that is a place that is extremely energetically strong and it is so it is so if you go there of course you would uh, notice immediately and <clears throat> the hut is at the very end of this lake. So all, all this mountain after mountain that you see, on the other side of the lake you see what basically is the last mountain yeah, uh, at the end of the lake. <clears throat> the, the mountain that by this shaman himself and by some other sort of indigenous local uh, friends of his um, has been separately called Shaitan Mountain because in the local languages Shaitan it's nothing to do with uh, Satan or anything like that it literally means idol idol so it's uh, uh, sort of the uh, the energetic center of the place what is interesting is that uh, when at the end of the summer, after the uh, sort of uh, midnight sun that goes on for about three months, you start having the first dark nights, you start having the first uh, uh, nor northern lights. And on the top of this mountain specifically, the northern lights are always more concentrated are sort of are more they happen more often 
than in any other place in the area. So you go on the lake from that mountain to the next one, it's not the same anymore. It's not the same anymore. So for sure the place, um, it's very intriguing, it's very mysterious. Uh, and it's energetically strong. And this mountain, you can climb it. You can climb it. Now, when you go up this mountain, what you see is formations of this uh, basaltic rock, very similar, very, very similar to what uh, you have seen through my videos or if you have been here, here in Gunung Padang, very similar. You have this sort of uh, walls, you have uh, formations that look like uh, floors, you have formations that look like stairs, staircases, steps, and this is something that in some of these mountains going up the plateau you see more than others, for example this Shaitan mountain. But what is extremely interesting about this mountain specifically is that when you go on the top of it and you are so on the plateau, on the top of the plateau, if you keep going inwards, inland, into the plateau, a few, let's say, hundred meters, but because it's all stones, yes, yeah, stone, 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 it's really uncomfortable, you have to go like this. And, uh, but anyway, after a few hundred meters, there is this formation that is, for example, you have seen here in Gunung Padang, yeah, when you look down from, from, from the hill, there are some of these places that are uh, sort of uh, square, almost, like before there was like some building of some kind, of some sort of something, yeah, same thing there but m way, way, way bigger. So imagine like this huge, 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 huge thing, like walls all around, like it's a, a building, like an ancient building, like a tens of thousands of years old building that fell apart during some, I don't know, <laughs> it's like, you know, these, uh, these uh, conspiracies, yeah, about ancient wars and stuff like that, but, uh, it's a very, very intriguing place. It's a place that is full of mysteries. It's a place that is unexplored. Therefore, there is still a lot, a lot, a lot to be discovered. I was also very lucky to be able at a certain point in this plateau to, um, <clears throat> to fly on a helicopter around into a more sort of uh, inland areas of the plateau that are very, very, very hard to, to reach. Uh, it would take days, 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 days of walking. Uh, helicopters are, uh, of course, especially over there, very expensive, very expensive. But I was lucky enough to have this chance and uh, some uh, other sort of rock formations that you see are, oh, are really mysterious, are, I don't know, it, it you know, look, looking at it from a certain perspective, it would be hard to say that they're not man-made. But then who knows? Then who knows? Uh, I mean, uh, geology is... Uh, uh, we, if someone thinks it's a boring, uh, it's a boring field, it's, it's a boring uh, science studying rocks, it's not, it's not at all. Uh, all these... Uh, how these things in millions of years form it's absolutely fascinating and incredible uh, so there are many many similarities many similarities that um, exist between well that exist that I, I think yeah I think there are many similarities between these two places that I was lucky enough to see firsthand now <clears throat> 
that place is in Siberia is interesting for um, not only for the plateau itself for many of the other stories regarding the local indigenous people of the area different tribes of different kinds and of course the nowadays sort of what is left of them unfortunately yeah and <clears throat> this uh, sort of last surviving uh, shaman so uh, if you are interested in any of these other stories regarding this other sort of uh, uh, subjects or places let me know let me know uh, and I will be happy to share more about it and perhaps in uh, the hopefully near future develop uh, some specific content uh, visual content regarding these uh, places specifically uh, so yeah just uh, I like sometimes to throw out some ideas, uh, to share some thoughts, just telling some stories. I am, uh, yeah, not uh, not trying to, uh, you know, teach anything. Not at all. Just just telling some stories uh, that I hope are going to inspire some people into uh, sort of getting into the mysterious <laughs> uh, world of exploration and of the undiscovered because the world is still full of undiscovered and unexplored places and mysteries so uh, this is uh, uh, my last day here in Gunung Padang. I hope you enjoyed some of my <laughs> absolutely amateur uh, shots and filming and uh, yeah I will see you soon. <laughs>